Hello everyone and welcome back to the brewery. I know it's been a while so I'm excited to try to get back to doing more videos. The main reason is the weather here was so cold this winter I wasn't doing a whole lot of brewing out in the non-insulated, non-climate controlled garage. So I'm out here now and back to a few projects so I thought I would bring you along. What I'm working on today is trying to improve my glycol chilling setup. And so I guess what I'll do first is just kind of run you through what I have here. I'll do a more detailed video on how I set up my glycol chiller, but I'll just give you a brief description of how it is currently set up and what my plan is for today's video to improve things. So what I have here is this small tabletop or kind of mini fridge sized freezer. It's actually an exclusive freezer, not a mini fridge with a freezer compartment. The whole thing is a freezer here. What I have inside of the freezer is a small reservoir, and that's one problem I'm looking to improve in the future is to get more capacity inside of there. But for now, I just have a small reservoir in here. There's a pump in there attached to one outgoing line, and that goes down through my cool sticks. I have a brew built cool sticks uh, cooling coil right there that comes back out and then runs into this cool zone uh, glycol blanket and so that runs through the blanket that'll puff up and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second and then the return runs back down into the freezer and into the reservoir the problem that I've run into is this works really well for oh and by the way I also have a temperature controller that runs into here over to here and that's the power cord for my freezer so what I'm doing is when my glycol gets down to 17 degrees the freezer cuts off if I go any lower than that with this controller uh, it's just always on and my glycol would turn into a block of ice because it'd be like negative 20 um, if I were to use the ink bird I think I could control it closer to zero and that's another thing that I would like to do is upgrade my temperature control for the freezer. But for now, this is what I've got. And my plan is, or I, I should explain the problem first. The problem is this setup works really well for fermentation control. Uh, during fermentation, I can keep things pretty cool if I need to for a lot of ales and similar beers up in the mid to upper 60s. This one is actually a sour uh, being maintained in the upper 70s. So it works really well for that. The problem is if I want to lager, maybe lower 60s, mid 50s, right in that area, or cold crash, it cannot do it. In the wintertime, it could probably do it. But right now, I can't get much colder than 50 degrees without really trying hard and it's a workout for all the equipment. And so, my plan to improve things, this is just kind of my budget idea for now, using things that I already have on hand without buying, um, I guess the ultimate thing would be to buy a glycol chiller uh, to the tune of $800. But my plan is to shorten one of these lines, the send line. I'm going to run it into this hose, or not this hose barb, but a different hose barb, into what's normally the water side of my um, wort chiller. It's going to run through here, through the 20 plates, and then back out here, and this will just be in line, and then that'll run through the existing setup. I'm going to drill two holes, or actually we'll start by just running the hoses through the lid here before we drill the holes in this small cooler and I'm gonna fill the cooler with a bag of ice and water and so my plan is this whole chiller is gonna get very cold and so we're gonna have the glycol solution running through the chiller that's surrounded in cold liquid and ice but then also it's gonna fill up with the I guess I take that back I'm not sure that I want to open up the beer side and run ice water through there, it would probably be okay because it's going to be clean water and this pretty much gets sanitized during brewing anyway. 
So I may end up taking these caps off and letting that ice water run down through there and surround that glycol solution even more. So we're going to call this sort of our initial test. We're just going to set it up with the caps on and just simply submerge this in ice water and see what kind of numbers we can get. We have a baseline right now. This has been running for the last couple days pretty much. And as I mentioned, the coldest I can get is 50. I'm going to say we're closer to 52 degrees, maybe 53 degrees is where I can actually maintain this. And so that's going to be our baseline. We'll see how much better we can do after maybe an hour of running it in its initial form. And then I'm going to take these caps off and see if there's a difference letting that run through there. And my third revision is that I have a second submersible pump. And what I'd like to do is put some adapters on these cam and groove fittings that switch it over to a hose barb. And I can run that submersible pump in the ice water solution and actually pump ice water through what's typically the beer side here and then we'll be running our glycol through here and see if that makes a difference. So we're going to have a chart set up here with three different options and we'll see which one does the best. I've also got some uh, foil tape and a pool noodle. I'm going to see if I can insulate my glycol lines any better because that'll help make a difference too but that's the plan and so I'll set you guys up and we'll get started. So this video uh, I'm just gonna fly through the clips here and kind of describe what was happening. It ran on a little bit and uh, I don't want to make you suffer through everything so we'll just fly through this together. So what I'm basically doing here is just describing how I'm going to cut the lines and set everything up. You can see I'm just taking my send line, which is that line on the left coming out of the bottom of our freezer, and I'm going to attach a garden hose connection to one side of it here. And then I actually have to take another chunk of line and attach the outgoing side to that. And then I simply take a hose mender here and connect that hose mender to the chunk of hose and back into the other end of the line that we cut. So pretty simple. I just didn't want to make you sit through that 6 minute and 40 second description that I thought was necessary. So here at the end, I'll get that hooked up and we're good to go. Okay, and here's the final setup. So we've got our outlet going in and our outlet reattaching to itself right here. So basically all we did is put this in line and this is going to be nice because my vision is when I don't want to use this, we've got the male and the female, I'll just unhook them and tie them together and it'll be like it was never there Then we can just reattach this during cool, cold crash times. So next step is to fill this up with ice water and then I know I'm going to need to add a little bit more water to my reservoir there because we've taken out quite a bit of it by having to fill this. So we'll get that done and I'll show you how it looks. So here's what we have. This is one small bag of ice, about a half gallon of water down in there. And I'll write that down on our chart. And obviously for long-term use, the lid would be shut so it would hold the ice a lot better. We're going to observe two numbers here during our test. The temperature of our glycol solution is listed here. And then the upper number here, it's funny how if you focus on that just right, it starts to flash. The upper number here is our um, beer temperature. So we want to watch for, obviously, this one to drop for sure. And we're hoping that our glycol gets a lot colder than 46. One thing that I'll typically do is wait for this to catch up. So we're at a big disadvantage right now because we're not running 16 degree glycol 
through the system. It's been running all day trying to keep up. And so we're running 46 degree glycol. So this will be interesting, but we're gonna write all this down and start the test now. So this is our initial test. And you can see our starting numbers are 54.6 and 46. I'm gonna crank it down real low because we want it to run for a full hour. So we're gonna crank it down to 35. And we'll hear the pump kick on. Gonna have a lot of air in the system here for a minute. And so this blanket is filling up and it kind of pumps up. You can see all the cells there. We've got glycol running down through here and back up down through here and then dumping back into our reservoir so you can see there we pumped all the warm stuff that was sitting out back into the reservoir reading the temperature here so initially it went up we're still climbing and I anticipate that we will before we start to drop but we're already dropping in beer temperature which is ideal so I'll probably check in halfway through here in a half hour and then we'll check in for our final check at one hour.